I would like to mention a little bit about this new record. This is a, tri a tribute to Dizzy. Because hear this every day I think of you. Yes. That is Arturo Sandoval, his uh, latest recording called A Tribute to uh, Dizzy. Uh, his mentor, uh, the late Dizzy Gillespie. Dizzy Gillespie actually has a, a, a medical thing named after him, Dizzy's Pouches. Because when, <laughs> when he plays, right, he gives uh, if a you've couple of big balloons. Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> a, a weirdest kind of thing, though. So you, let me just go backwards here before we get you to play. And, and I appreciate the fact that you're going to stay till quarter after two. I thank you very much for that. Oh, that means an awful lot to it's me. It's my pleasure, and it's, 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 it's very good for me. Good. More than for you. Well, I because don't know I, about that. I, I, I need people to know about my music and my records. Yes, you know. and that you're performing tonight at 7.30 nice, at the band yes. shell at the, at the CNE. Let's just go back here. You're talking about you met Dizzy Gillespie in 77. Uh, 77. I'm confused. Was that, that, that was at a time when Americans could travel to the United States. Is that what that was? Yes. Oh, actually, after 61, uh, um, until now, you know, still that same kind of situation, but uh, during those years, I think it was uh, during uh, President Jim Carter, Jimmy Carter, mm -hmm. uh, um, in the late 70s, it uh, was like a little break there, like a kind of uh, cultural exchange of mm -hmm. one of those things. And uh, But they went there, and they stopped there for 48 hours. And, and, then, and then CBS, the president of CBS, came down but, the but following every, year? Everything, you know, I always talk, and I, and I mention Dizzy Gillespie because he, he means so much to me. And um, everything happened because of him. Everything happened. I mean, in, in my musical life, you know. After that, Dizzy was there. He came back to New York and started to talk to everybody about those musicians he saw in Cuba. Because he was expecting a good percussionist and you know, things like that, but he wasn't expecting a good saxophone player, piano players, and trumpet players. You know, he, he he wasn't expecting that, to be honest. And he he said that to me later. I was impressed because I I, I couldn't imagine people play like you do. And okay, and then he started to talk about everybody about about what he saw. And a few months later, the president of Columbia Record, Mr. Bruce Lungwell. He flew to Cuba, and he went there to one of our rehearsals with the band who I was a member, and we founded together with Paquito Rivera and, and, and Chucho Valdez and, and other members of, of the Irakere. It's the name of the band. We put it together in 1973. Irakere? Irakere, yeah. And um, Bruce went to the rehearsal. He saw the band, he heard the whole rehearsal, and then he came and introduced himself. I couldn't talk to him because I couldn't speak any English at all. Zero. Worse than now. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> Your English is fine. <laughs> I survived. You know. and, um, but somebody talked to him somehow, and he asked a few questions. And then he went to the Minister of Culture and talked to some people there from the government, and he signed the band for three years. I don't know how that happened. Don't ask me. But that, that was true. And then... In July, in the summer of 78, uh, uh, I mean, one year after, they put us on the plane and flew to New York. They drove us from LaGuardia Airport straight to the sound check at the Carnegie Hall. And we didn't check in the hotel until late, late, late night. And, um, and we, do, we played the second part of a show where the first half was Mary Lou Williams' trio and Bill Evans' trio. And uh, we played the second half. Columbia made a recording out of that, and that was our first Grammy. Wow. And that it was, was everything, the, the very, very first day in the U.S. It was an album that, when it came out, all of us bought and could not believe the playing in it. I mean, it was unbelievable playing. I think your mic is, is off. Yeah, why is your mic off here? Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, it's just not working. Okay, so, uh, say that again. Okay. Sure. <laughs> no, I was saying that many of us went out and bought that album. 
and it was like the first time we heard a band play like that. Especially all the ensemble work yeah, where yeah, they yeah, stopped yeah, the yeah. rhythm section and the horns would go on with all these yeah, 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 spectacular yeah, yeah. lines. <laughs> okay, we, we've yeah. got to, because we uh, want to get this uh, this tune in before we uh, go to the news in five minutes from now. So uh, uh, introduce your, your, your pianist who's going to play with you here. Oh yes, Kemuel Roy is my pianist. He is a Cuban like me. He lives in Miami and then uh, we get together, you know, when we go to a gig because I live in California. <coughs> okay, and so what are you going to play for us? We're going to play. What's the name of this station? 1010? 1010. Okay, this is a 1010 Blues. <laughs> <laughs> Just like that, ladies and gentlemen. Born right in front of your ears. Here one, you go. Two, one. <laughs> Thank you. 